Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Dunn and I am a research scientist for the University of Idaho Integrated Design Lab. This is a video tutorial that is designed to showcase a tool that my colleague Katie Licklider has created for our Building Simulation Users Group. Essentially the tool is meant to be an HVAC template generator for Energy Plus, so it's designed to automate the process of aggregating all the text objects that you need to define HVAC template systems in Energy Plus, and also to make um, the specification of large models with lots and lots of zones much easier and much more streamlined. So to access the tool, it's for free on our website. Uh, you can go to our website at idlboise.com slash bsug. You'll get a redirect link uh, to actually go to our Google site that we've designed for this. You can also just Google bsug 2.0 and it should come up. So this is the home page of the website. You can see that there's a modeling resources drop down or it's also a sidebar. And under the modeling resources, which are all the things that we've designed to help um, aid the building simulation community, there's a, a menu option called IDF Objects. So if we expand that, we can click on this HVAC template generator, and it talks a little bit about um, you know, what it was designed for, what I just mentioned. This video will also exist right here as a tutorial on how to use the tool. And you can see down here, you can just download it um, from our website via this uh, link. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. That's and then it should pop up in um, the open office formats and you can tell uh, that there is macros embedded within the project so you have to enable these and uh, you know we we made these HVAC generators in the open office environment to make it non-proprietary so to try to open it up to the widest audience possible this is why we didn't um, end up going with Excel and so if you aren't able to use this because of your macro settings there's a little note here on the first tab but the, where you would change that is under Tools, Options, Security, and then this is where you can change your macro settings. So if you have it under Medium, it will ask you to enable macros if it senses there are some in the project. That's what we usually use um, here at the lab. So this is what the, the tool interface looks like. You can see it's just a simple spreadsheet format. Um, this template here is designed to be kind of the main engine, and this is where you choose the system that you're going to design. The other tabs are all of the different um, Energy Plus objects specified. Um, uh, you can see there are a, a lot of them. They, they essentially reference the uh, template structures, which if you're familiar with the input-output reference, um, you know, there's a section on HVAC templates which talks about if you want to model something like a package terminal air conditioner, then you need the following text objects to uh, specify that system. So you need a thermostat. You need a zone a PTAC, and you also need this plant um, hot water loop optional if you choose the hot water option. The next page you can see also you need the boiler as part of that. So what we've essentially done is we've taken these different system descriptions and translated them into the uh, front page of this tool, which is this guy here. So essentially, <clears throat> by clicking on this drop down, these are all the different template systems that you can uh, start to, to model. So if we start to kind of change these, you can see that it will automatically mark which tabs or which uh, HVAC objects are actually needed to specify that system. Um, and going back to these guys, essentially the way this is set up, uh, these are the input fields for that object. These are some of the defaults to aid in, in uh, specifying the object. And then you would put your information for your different zones or different pieces of equipment in the columns next to it corresponding with the row of that input. So the idea is if you have a spreadsheet <clears throat> where you've organized your inputs, um, you can just go ahead and copy and paste those into this to uh, eventually turn it into something that Energy Plus can read. So it really makes um, specifying large projects much easier, especially if you have some organization up front um, in terms of your model specification inputs and, and organization. So if we go back to our um, initial tab, uh, let's go ahead and stick with this VAV built-up system. Uh, looks like it's got water-cooled chiller, boiler, and a tower. We can see all the objects that we will ultimately need to specify. And one thing that's nice about this tool is if we click this um, box here, if we insert an X, when we generate the IDF uh, initially, it will go ahead and filter out all of the tabs that we don't need 
which kind of makes this a lot easier to, to wield and, and to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Generate IDF, <clears throat> and you can see, I think you actually have to click it twice, there we go, went ahead and filtered those down, and you can see that it outputs these objects in the Energy Plus format that we can just copy and paste into um, a text editor. But you'll notice that everything is blank, right? So the field left of the comma is actually what the input is, and then this is the, the note. And since we haven't actually specified anything, it just turns them out as blank objects. Excuse me, so let's go ahead and, and go to this VAB object, and we'll specify um, just some test objects to see how that translates over. So this would be the VAV box object. You can see you can either do fan powered or just your regular VAV box. I'm just going to go ahead and type in some test zones. So you can imagine if you had these in a separate spreadsheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and, for time's sake, just add these in like so. So theoretically, we have three zones um, specified with just these test um, inputs, essentially. So if we go back to our template, now when we click this Generate IDF, you can see that it has now created those zones. There are three objects that were created for the zone VAV that we'll see here on the left. And you can see here's our zone 1 that we specified and all the test inputs. If we scroll down, we'll see zone 2. And if we scroll down, we'll see zone 3. So the macro um, goes column by column until it sees a blank column, and then it uh, moves on to the next tab. So after zone three, we start to see the fan powered boxes, which are blank. We didn't uh, input anything. Then there's the system VAV object, which was also blank because we didn't input it. Um, but you can see that it's going tab by tab and uh, just outputting what we have or have not specified amongst these different bits. So once you have um, this set up and everything's specified according to your model, you can go ahead and copy and paste this into a general text editor to um, insert into Energy Plus or put into your actual model. An important thing to note as well is that you can't just select the column. You actually have to go down and select you know, the entirety of the rows of your objects or else when you paste it, it will paste it into infinity, which of course can sometimes crash your file or just slow, slow it down um, quite a bit. So once we have these copied, we can just go to our general uh, Notepad++ or Notepad editor. We can paste those in, and you can see that this is ready to go into our Energy Plus input file or um, wherever we want it to go from here. And one thing that's interesting is in my version, um, it pastes the tab as these quotation marks. That generally should not happen um, with the version that we are going to upload up to the website. But if it does happen, just for sakes of this uh, tutorial, Notepad++ has some really good filtering tools to where we can replace in the whole um, file the uh, quotation mark at the beginning of the line, since this is a regular expression. We can just replace that essentially with the space. We just replace all, and you can see it removes those quotation marks. And now it's ready to go. Like I said, generally, that shouldn't happen when you paste it over, but if it does, there are some easy ways to go ahead and uh, fix that. And then we're pretty much ready to go for this particular VAB um, template system. So just to review, um, the first thing that you do is select whatever system that you want to model through the drop-down. You know, make sure you insert an X here just so it kind of makes your life a little bit easier in terms of the tabs. Um, you click Generate IDF. It will initially um, output all the objects. And then you can go in and modify your tabs according to your model. And then when you're done with that, generally hit Generate IDF again, and then uh, copy and paste this into your Notepad++ or text editor formats, and you are uh, ready to go. And that's pretty much it. I mean, we designed this to be as easy as possible. Um, it really speeds up the process, because if you didn't have something like this, we'd either have to take the objects themselves from the example file and modify them according to your needs, or build them from scratch uh, by copy and pasting the IDF examples at the end of each documentation section. Um, if you do either of those two ways, you can really only do one object at a time, and that can be really cumbersome, especially when some models can get up to 100, 200, 300 zones. So this is a, hopefully will save you some time and be easy enough to use um, to really be useful in that process. So if you have any questions, you know, you can actually um, leave some comments on our website. If you have a, a Google account, uh, you can email me at jdunn at uidaho.edu. That's j-d-u-n-n -N at uidaho.edu. 
with any questions or comments, or if you have any feedback on the tool, we would love to hear it. Um, so hopefully um, you can access this and use it and give us some feedback and hopefully helps out on your projects. Thanks for listening. Cheers.